Hello, this is Billy Corp from the Nostalgia Mall, and today we're going to be looking at a modern computer for once, but a modern computer that performs very nostalgic tasks. Um, I, I know that's a complicated way of explaining it, but the um, best way to describe it, though, is this computer, a Dell Optiplex 790, with a Core i5-2400, uh, I think, a Sandy Bridge era, and 4 gigs of RAM and a 120 gig SSD is running a special Linux uh, distro, I guess you can call it a Linux distro, called Batosira. And basically it performs just like um, RetroPie on a Raspberry Pi performs. You have a, a retro arch interface and the ability to emulate all kinds of vintage systems, consoles, computer systems, all kinds of stuff, all on a PC. And what makes this um, better than a Raspberry Pi is that using a computer like this is a lot more powerful than a Retro Pi. And using this, um, you can emulate more powerful systems like on a uh, Retro Pi. Em emulating a N64 is very spotty at best. And you can forget about emulating something like a Saturn or a... Uh, GameCube or a Dreamcast. Using something like this, all those systems run a million times better. Although GameCube emulation is still a little bit spotty, but I think that's just because GameCubes are just difficult to emulate right now. I first learned about this um, type of setup from a uh, YouTube video I saw, um, which is a much more informative video than this is going to be probably. <laughs> I'll put the link in the description because I can't remember the name of the uh, YouTube user who posted this, but he basically took a computer system uh, a little bit older than this. It was a Core 2 Duo era system and put Batosira on it and it ran just fine. So. Um, that got me thinking, you know, I've got this um, old computer lying around just collecting dust doing nothing. Why not give it a try? I had been using this uh, Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus for the last year and a half or so, and it works really well. And I still recommend doing this um, if you want a cheap way to emulate a bunch of stuff, but you know, I figured if I have this computer lying around doing nothing and I can uh, use it in a way that's better than this, then why not give it a try? So I did. I downloaded Batosira and installed it on this computer and it runs beautifully on here. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at it. Okay, I've got this uh, computer hooked up to my 40 inch 1080p RCA television set. Yes, I still say television set like it's 30 years ago. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn the computer on. Got it hooked up through HDMI. Well, actually, through a display port to HDMI adapter, to be more specific. And now it's booting into Bato Sierra. And look how fast that boots. I was amazed the um, first time I booted this up. Even um, after using almost 40 gigabytes of space on this uh, SSD I have installed on here, it still runs. Uh, it still boots up um, almost immediately. You can't do that with uh, Windows or uh, even most other versions of Linux. That's uh, definitely a really cool uh, aspect of that. So, what systems do I have on here? Well, I have um, Apple II, and by the way, connected to this is a uh, very cheap $5 eBay uh, wireless controller, which actually works really, really well. And for other uh, computer-like inputs, I've got this wireless uh, Logitech keyboard with a built-in trackpad. I've got Atari 2600 on here. All kinds of games on here. Oh, 
love asteroids. Even though I'm not very good at it, <laughs> as you can probably tell. At least I'm able to play this game unlike Load Runner. Kamikaze. <laughs> and uh, Commodore 64, I uh, haven't done anything with that yet, really. We'll save MS DOS for later. We got Dreamcast on here, GameCube, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive, or uh, Genesis as it's known over here. N64, NES, PC Engine, or the uh, TurboGrafx-16 as it's called over here. Let's see. I'm not too familiar with this uh, system, so... And PS1 emulation on here is... Perfect. So let's uh, back out of that for now. And Sega Saturn emulation is pretty good on here as well. Scum VM works on here. Sega 32X, Sega CD, Super Nintendo. But anyway, uh, before we proceed, I just want to show uh, a couple of settings here that I have set up. Originally, when I put this system together, I put in a low-profile video card, an NVIDIA GeForce GT520, and video output on it worked perfectly. However, no matter what I did, I could not get sound to output through HDMI. It drove me crazy. I researched it like crazy online for hours and hours, tried all kinds of different things. Nothing could get sound to come out of it, so I just had to... Uh, plug the speakers that I normally have connected to this TV. Um, they're just um, old computer speakers with a subwoofer because the, TV, the speakers in the TV are garbage. <laughs> I had to unplug them from the TV and plug them into the back of the computer to get good sound out of it. But eventually I wound up buying a $3 display port to HDMI adapter for this computer because the onboard Intel graphics on this system, the, the the uh, I.O. on this does not include a HDMI output, so I just had to buy a DisplayPort adapter, and I plugged uh, HDMI up to that, and lo and behold, sound works perfectly now. So, um, the graphics on this is Intel HD 2000, which is pretty common on desktop systems of this era. But everything I play on here runs just fine, so uh, I really don't need to upgrade the video on here anytime soon, I don't think. Also um, comes with uh, Cody Media Center, which is really nice. I really haven't set anything up on that. I don't know if I will or not, since I have a Roku connected to this TV. There's really no point in having that, but it's there if I do need it. So anyway, back to uh, uh, gaming. This also has a really nice scraping system on here that actually... Uh, downloads pictures, info, and video previews of the games. Usually sound works on that, but for some reason the video previews don't have sound at the moment. I forget why that is. Of course, this is uh, Game Boy. So let's... Uh, how about we try a Super Nintendo game? One of my favorite games of all time for the Super Nintendo. Super Pinball Behind the Mask. I love the music in this game.
<laughs> Face detection on my camera is picking up those masks. <laughs> Lovely music. And I do own this on a uh, Super Nintendo cartridge. Not very easy trying to play this in front of a camera. <laughs> By that, I mean there's a camera literally in front of me blocking my view. <laughs> Enough of that. Okay, now for uh, the Sega Genesis. This is a game that I remember seeing uh, available for rent at a, at a video store back in the late 90s. But uh, And I really wanted it, but it was never in stock. I think the game must have been stolen or something. But it was a game called Boogerman. I think it was for the Super Nintendo, but... Today we'll be looking at the uh, Genesis port of it. This is called Booger Man. This is the most immature game I have ever seen. Well, for the most part, it's <laughs> it is pretty immature. version of it is a bit more complex than the Super Nintendo, from what I can tell. This is a little bit better. This level looks about the same though. The uh, Super Nintendo version, there's a button you can press that will make them yell, Booger! But I don't think it's on this version. That's unfortunate. Because that was quite entertaining. And your, pa and your energy meter on the top left, it's just a string of snot. <laughs> 
This game was created by nine-year-old boys. That's gotta be what happened. Oh. Okay, that wasn't my energy meter, apparently. <laughs> I'm usually better at this game, but again, I got a camera in my face right now. I don't know what those are supposed to be. And when uh, someone dies, they make a farting sound. <laughs> this game is hilarious. <laughs> Probably drove uh, parents very crazy when this came out. Don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> and get from one part of the level to another, you get sucked up by a nose. Okay, now for something a little bit more heavy duty, let's move over to Nintendo 64 and find us a good one. This game is very underrated. It's a game called Blast Cores. See, it's playing just fine, for the most part. I would spend hours and hours playing this game as a kid, playing 64. And yet, you never hear anyone talk about this game. Basically, you gotta go around destroying stuff before uh, this uh, nuclear bomb kind of thing uh, crashes into them and just destroys the world, I guess. It's a very fun game, although it's a little bit awkward playing on this uh, controller. It works a lot better on an actual... Nintendo 64 controller. Which, um, I do have a N64 uh, USB adapter I can plug up to this uh, machine at some point. So yeah, I'm usually better at this game, it's just I'm not used to playing it with this type of controller. There we go. You're just trying to impress me. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is running beautifully, I have to say. Go for it. Could not do this at all on a uh, Raspberry Pi. Well, we could, but it wasn't very pleasant. I remember, um, I had this game, I owned this game as a child, in fact, I still grew up in the same park here. But I would, um, despite that, go to the video store and rent it anyway, because uh, whoever had been playing it before had progressed a lot further than me on my copy. Nice work. And so I was able to uh, play the uh, later levels. So that was very <laughs> fun. Fun memories there. Okay, this um, emulation setup can also emulate PC games, a lot of them actually, including ScumVM based games, uh, games built on the Scum engine. And you can even scrape them as well. Look, it even downloads a, uh, a preview video of Freddy Fish um, Case of the Missing Kelp Seed, so that is really, really neat. As well as Pup Pup Goes to the Moon. Now, I rarely, uh, I doubt I'm rarely ever going to play this, these games uh, right here because I have so many vintage computers I can play these on that are a lot more authentic. However, um, it is convenient to have this so I can just sit in my recliner and play these games on a big screen. So that's where this will come in handy for. So we can load up... Uh, Okay, how about Freddy Fish 2, The Case of the Haunted Schoolhouse? <laughs> Emulates it flawlessly. Good morning, Mr. Krabby. <laughs> I remember getting this game when it first came out in September 1996, the day before Hurricane Fran hit North Carolina. That's how I can remember that. That's weird. The schoolhouse is over here. And I can play this with my keyboard and trackpad combo device. I'll race you to school, Freddy! Where are all the guppies? The guppies say the school is haunted by a ghost, and that the ghost is stealing their toy. I saw the ghost, Mrs. Croker. It stupefied me with fear, and then it stole my toy. Oh. Ah. Hey, that's my toy. Oh. That couldn't have been real. There's no such thing as ghosts. Luther and I will find that so-called ghost and get back all the toys. Good luck, Freddy. You're gonna need it. I've always liked uh, being able to draw on this chalkboard. And I'll show you why in a little bit. Hey. That's why um, whatever you draw on the chalkboard uh, stays on it, even when you zoom back out. So 
that is very clever there. I really like that. DOSBox, so you can play um, most of any DOS games on here, and again it's able to uh, scrape the uh, game info, which is very, very convenient, like Jill the Jungle there. And try out Jazz Jackrabbit. I believe the uh, game pad also works on here as well. We just gotta set it up. There we go. Yeah, I'm now using the game pad. So that's um, about all there is to show on this. Um, I'm very, very impressed with this, and if you have any uh, uh, 
more modern computers lying around doing nothing um, that are that's capable of running all this, then I highly recommend uh, downloading a copy of Bato Sierra and put it on here. Uh, Bato Sierra is available um, for free, which is really nice. And as for my uh, Raspberry Pi, I intend to uh, hook this up on my bedroom TV. I just got to get another wireless controller and I'll be all set for that. One thing I also forgot to mention is uh, copying ROMs to this system is very, very easy because it has a built-in Samba share that you can access through your Windows PC, through your networking, and you can just um, copy and paste them over. It's as simple as that. So, until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.